So great to be here today. And so now I'm gonna talk about one of my favorite subjects, and that's the biblical, that's the biblical mandate to be excellent at science and engineering. And it's important to understand uh, this biblical mandate because it gives us, it builds our faith in asking the Lord Jesus for help when we're stuck. So the first part of the biblical mandate for science and engineering comes from the blessing on creation in Genesis chapter 1, where after God creates, he says, Be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the birds of the air and the beasts of the field and the fish of the sea. So as you recall, Adam and Eve were put into the Garden of Eden to work it, to, to grow crops, to take care of the garden, and to make it beautiful. So where science and engineering comes in and has really been the greatest usefulness in, to humanity has been in being fruitful and multiplying, fill the earth and subdue it. In the last 150 years, our ability to live uh, in more densely populated areas has increased significantly for several reasons, right? But most of that has to do with the improvements in science and engineering, the improvements in science to understand disease and sanitation and uh, infrastructure and the, the improvements in engineering to bring about you know, improved uh, sanitation, improved infrastructure. And when you also think about the flip side of uh, being fruitful and multiplying, filling the earth and subdue it, think about agriculture, right? The average number of pounds per acre that a farm can grow has increased tremendously in the last 150 years as we learn about different agricultural practices, as we learn how to you know, chemically uh, create the volumes of fertilizer that are needed, how the, the agricultural uh, tractors and other farm equipments, the combines have been the result of engineering, allowing the, the food produced to ac per acre has increased by a factor of 10 to 20 depending on where you exactly you look and what crop you're talking about in the last 150 years so when you're stuck in your science and engineering this is the promise that you bring back to god because god blessed us and he said be fruitful and multiply so we can live under the blessing if we ask in science and engineering but when sin happened God made a lot of our work harder, right? God cursed the ground and he said, cursed is the ground because of you. By the sweat of your brow, you will earn the bread that you eat and that it will yield thorns and thistles for you. So when we face those thorns and thistles, that's where we wanna ask the Lord Jesus for help. The second blessing that we can live under as we pursue science and engineering comes from Genesis chapter 12 where God said to Abram leave your country your people and your father's household and go to the land I will show you and I will make your name great and you will be a blessing and that all the peoples of the earth will be blessed through you and he says whoever blesses you meaning blesses Abraham I will bless and whoever curses you I will curse and all the nations of the earth will be blessed through you. So we can live under this blessing to Abraham. And many, many, many scientific advancements happened in the late 30s and the early 40s in the run-up and the, the, the World War II era, right? And who was winning the scientific advancements in the 30s and 40s? Well, it was England and it was the United States predominantly and they were fighting Germany. And ultimately, the United States and England were blessed in their science during the pre-World War II and World War II errors because we were going to put an end to the Holocaust 
and we were going to bless and provide for and recognize the restoration of the nation of Israel. So if you think about all the advancements in radar, in jet engines, in flight technology, in nuclear power that came in that short period of time, we were blessed because the United States and England had resolved to be a blessing to the Jewish people and particularly in the matter of ending the Holocaust. And the third mandate that we have, the blessing that we can lay hold of with regard to science and engineering is the Great Commission which Jesus gives in Matthew 28, right? He says, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I will be with you always to the very end of the age. So when we think about being blessed in our science and engineering, first we have what I call the Good Commission to be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. And we can, we can go to God and we can ask Jesus for that blessing. The, secondly, we have the prospect of blessing Abraham and his offspring. And we can go to the Lord and say, Lord, I need your help in this science and engineering because I am resolved to be a blessing on the earth to Abraham and his descendants. And third, you can go to God if you're a person of faith, if you've started to follow Jesus and say, Lord, I want to push your great commission forward. Help me in my science and engineering so that I can be a blessing on the earth and a light to lighten the Gentiles. So don't just think about, you know, new means of mass communication, right? In the 50s through the 80s, it was television, right? How many countries and new peoples did the gospel reach because of television? And in the second half of the 20th century, how many new peoples did the gospel reach because of uh, airplanes and improvements in flight? And how much more powerful were those gospel missionaries when they could bring along with them medical missionaries to help uh, fight the disease and not just tell them about Jesus, but you know, introduce the practical ways that science has brought about to improve agriculture and medicine and sanitation. So we can be a blessing on the earth according with those three blessings and we can ask the Lord Jesus for help. Well, praise the Lord Jesus. I'm Dr. Courtney, Jesus Professor. I put my faith in Jesus, my anchor to the ground, my hope in 